Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about MedPalm, which is a model, a large language model, especially built for medical tasks. Okay, so let's get started. Um, first, let me talk about this data set uh, called as MultiMed QA. MultiMed QA is, in fact, a benchmark with six medical question answering data sets. And these data sets basically have to do everything about medical stuff, professional medicine, research and consumer queries. Um, and then, you know, this data, this benchmark data set, Multimate QA, also consists of yet another extra data set called as Health Search QA, which is basically a data set of medical questions searched online. Thus, Multimate QA is basically a combination of overall seven different data sets Health Search QA, uh, Life QA, medic Medication QA, PubMed QA, MMLU, uh, some of those tasks from MMLU. Uh, med MCQA and med QA, which is basically uh, uh, which is basically derived from US MLE uh, data set, a uh, US MLE uh, uh, exam questions. Right. So here is some description about these data sets. So for example, med QA uh, US MLE is essentially a general medical knowledge which is tested in US medical licensing exam. It is basically a question answering data set with four to five choices. So it is a multi choice question kind of thing. And uh, there are 11,000 or so examples in the train in the in the uh, in the overall dev set. Right? Uh, now, Med MCQA essentially is a data set created using India based uh, medical exams uh, like AIMS and uh, NEET exams, general medical knowledge, which is tested in Indian uh, medical entrance exams. It also is basically multi choice questions, so um, uh, it has four choices and also explanations associated with the right choice. Right? It's a large data set, 187,000 instances. Right? PubMed QA is essentially biomedical scientific literature. And it has a question plus context plus answer. So it is more like reading comprehension style. So it has a context and then you have to answer the question in the context. Uh, you have to come up with the answer in the context, uh, you know, in the context of the passage which is provided. Uh, the answer has to be yes, no, or maybe. And then there is also a long answer to describe why yes, why no, or why maybe. It's a, it's a, you know, it basically has, a, a, you know, a small number of, uh, 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 it's relatively smaller. So essentially that's basically the size of PubMed QA. Okay. MMLU is basically a benchmark containing several data sets of which they consider some subsets which are medical oriented. So in this particular work, you know, so as to create a uh, flan palm or med palm. Okay. Uh, medical knowledge covering anatomy, um, clinical knowledge, college medicine, medical genetics, professional medicine and college biology. Right. So again, that's a very small data set um, uh, with uh, multi choice questions. So question plus answers. Life QA essentially a data set um, um, about consumer knowledge. So it uh, essentially a question plus long answer kind of data set. Medication QA is medication knowledge frequently sought by consumers. Again, these are all consumer based questions. Uh, and then health search QA is a new data set that they that they sort of uh, contribute, right? So so that's basically about multi med QA. So essentially, uh, they have basically come up with this multi med QA benchmark where six of those data sets are older ones, and one of them basically they have contributed as a new data set. Now, based on these data sets, they created they basically um, uh, created this flan palm model. Uh, or, or other, in fact, not not on these data sets. In fact, uh, you know, they basically evaluated on these data sets using the FAM, flan palm model. So, what is flan palm model? Well, flan palm model is essentially instruction tuned variant of palm model. So, palm is a 540 billion parameter model coming from Google. Uh, they actually instruction fine tuned it uh, so as to create flan palm, which I've covered in one of the previous videos. Now, what they did with these data sets, which I have mentioned here, this benchmark, MultiMed QA, is to test on these data sets and uh, come up with the results. And in fact, they have come up with state of the art results. Um, now, if you look at uh, a med QA benchmark, this is med QA USMLE benchmark. You know, you see that several efforts have been made to come up with really good results here. The latest one being PubMed GPT uh, 2.7 billion parameter model, but then uh, they were able to obtain a 17% uh, jump in the accuracy um, uh, with the flan palm model. Okay? So it's all zero shot flan palm. In the sense that you have a plan palm model and you essentially just give it uh, uh, questions from this uh, new benchmark. Um, in fact, med QA data set in this particular case, and you basically see 17% jump. Now that's really out of the box jump without any further work in that senses, right? Uh, uh, similarly, you see significant significant uh, you know improvements in accuracy across several data sets in the benchmark, right? Med MCQA, you basically observe that the previous state of the art was essentially Galactica but then they were able to obtain a significant jump out there. 
Similarly, in MedQA, as we already noticed here, you know, they were able to obtain this jump on top of the PubMed GPT model, right? And then PubMed QA, well, they were able to obtain some slight jump over Bio GPT model as well. Now these are tasks from MMLU benchmark. So uh, remember, uh, we also said that uh, you know uh, MultiMed QA is basically going to contain tasks from multi, uh, MMLU benchmark as well. And you uh, observe that across different subsets, uh, clinical knowledge, professional medicine, medical genetics, and so on, uh, what you observed is that uh, the Flan Palm essentially performs the best, and it essentially beats really, really large uh, LLM models like OPT, Bloom, Galactica, Gopher, and Chinchilla. Uh, uh, medical, uh, you know, question answering is not easy. Of course, providing high quality answers essentially requires comprehension of medical context, recall of appropriate knowledge and reasoning with expert information. So, you know, it basically requires a good amount of medical understanding. So it's great to see that Flanpam model without any specific uh, fine tuning was able to achieve all of these. Now, uh, further, what they observed is that they did some human evaluation and they found that flan pump was not up to the mark, right? And therefore, they trained what is called as med palm model. Now, med palm model, again, the work involved is pretty small, but then it's uh, interesting the way they have trained med palm model. Um, so, med palm model has been trained by doing instruction prompt tuning on flan palm model. Okay. So before inst understanding instruction uh, prompt tuning, let's basically understand prompt tuning. So what is prompt tuning? Prompt tuning basically means learning of soft prompt vectors. Now remember, soft prompt vectors are very different from hard prompt vectors. When people typically talk about prompt engineering, they typically mean coming up with good English as to talk to the bot in that sense, right? But uh, soft prompt tuning essentially is uh, learning those prompt vectors uh, and embedding prompt embeddings rather than actually coming up with uh, prompt words. Okay? So prompt tuning is learning of soft prompt vectors via backpropagation while keeping the rest of the large language model parameters frozen. So you freeze the large language model, but then you just learn those soft prompt vectors. And thus you allow easy reuse of a single model across tasks. So it's basically like enabling the model to work across tasks by actually learning those soft prompt vectors. Okay. Now what they did in instruction prompt tuning says so to basically train MedPAM model out of FlanPAM model is basically to do hard and soft hybrid prompt tuning. So they basically did a combination hard and soft hybrid prompt tuning uh, using these five different steps. So they don't, uh, they still have their hard prompts. So uh, somebody is going to really type those hard prompts anyway. So for example, these ones, but then they also had soft prompts and those soft prompt vectors were basically tuned. Okay. Uh, they were basically tuned using a very small data set of just 65 examples, but they are manually curated really, really awesome 65 examples with diverse knowledge in them. Okay. Uh, they, uh, of course, use the base model as Flanpam model and they froze the Flanpam model, but they randomly initialized a P cross E matrix where P is the soft prompt length and E is essentially the model's embedding token dimension. So for each of the soft prompts, and they have 50, uh, P different soft prompt uh, vectors, you know, you essentially have E as a dimensionality, and that is all that you need to learn via backpropagation. So prepend this matrix to any embedding inputs to the LLM, and then train the matrix via backpropagation on a negative log likelihood loss, as in uh, as as you do in prompt tuning, so as to maximize the probability of of basically observing the correct answer. Okay. So essentially, MedPAM model has been, you know, obtained as a combination of these methods, as you see, you know, they basically use the FlanPAM model as the base, uh, and then they, uh, or rather, PAM model as the base, instruction tune on, uh, you know, instruction tune to get the uh, FlanPAM model, and then instruction prompt tunes as to finally get the MedPAM model. So, you know, uh, how does MedPAM model compare to FlanPAM now? So earlier in the video, I already talked about how good FlanPAM model is. Uh, now, you know, compared to FlanPAM model, MedPalm actually, uh, um, you know, they, they compared using several human evaluations uh, and they found that the MedPalm model is really, really awesome across several parameters, as we'll see here. So scientific consensus. So they basically uh, evaluated whether the model aligns with the medical community consensus about answering a question or it is opposed to consensus or no consensus at all. Right. So what you observe is that, of course, a clinician typically aligns uh, and there is good consensus among, clinic among clinicians themselves, right? So 93%, this is like uh, human expert evaluation in that sense, right? But then if you compare with FlanPalm, uh, only 62% alignment, while MedPalm actually has 92.6% alignment with uh, the general community consensus, which is awesome, right? Um, similarly, if you look at inappropriate or incorrect content generated, uh, you know, FlanPalm model actually generated uh, around, uh, um, uh, around uh, you know, uh, so about 7% uh, uh, or so, which is basically there while MedPalm generated slightly less, slightly less, right? So these percentages are for the middle portion, which is essentially little uh, clinical significance. Okay? 
So essentially, um, um, the idea is that uh, a clinician, of course, is really awesome. So clinician generates very little inappropriate content. Uh, flat palm generates uh, some inappropriate content and med palm uh, generates lesser inappropriate content. That is the takeaway, right? Uh, missing content. So sometimes it is important to actually uh, come up with a complete answer and clinicians typically come up with complete answers. Uh, flat palm model essentially, um, um, you know, so there was no missing content, but then in flat palm, uh, there was quite some missing content, but in med palm, there was less missing content. Therefore, you know, as you notice in, in various criteria, med palm model is cl closer to clinician across all of these different parameters. And these parameters are super important when judging medical oriented large language models. Okay. Extent of possible harm. So, you know, you recommend someone to do something and uh, it's a medical situation. So, you know, it can cause harm to those people. Uh, and then, well, clinical uh, clinician, of course, will not recommend anything that causes harm to uh, patients, but then flan palm model sometimes can be harmful, med palm less so, right? Likelihood of possible harm, again, you know, med palm is closer to clinician, as you say. Possibility of bias. So sometimes the answers generated by uh, by this model, uh, by these large language models could be really targeted towards, uh, let's say, just males and the answer may not apply to females or they may be targeted to certain people suffering from certain conditions, but may not apply to people with other medical conditions. And it turns out that MedPalm is basically very close to clinician in terms of generating uh, uh, in terms of generating less biased answers. Right? Now, you know, when you generate answers, of course, you must be able to comprehend nicely. As I mentioned, medical answer generation is essentially a very difficult task. It requires correct comprehension, correct retrieval of existing knowledge, and then correct reasoning so as to be able to come up with right answers. And as you observe here, you know, the MedPalm model is more closer to the clinician compared to the FlanPalm model, which is not as good in terms of doing correct reasoning or correct retrieval and correct uh, comprehension. Right? Now, of course, they also evaluated how many times there is incorrect comprehension, or incorrect retrieval, and incorrect reasoning, right? Uh, and then again, you observe that the MedPalm model does much lesser of these incorrect things compared to flat palm model. You might be wondering if incorrect and correct essentially why both of them are required. Well, in some answers, you know, sometimes you could do partial correct comprehension, and then some of them, you know, uh, partially it could be incorrect, and therefore it does make sense to do both of those analyses. Okay. So here are some examples of uh, MedPalm responses to questions in the in the you know health search QA data set which these folks essentially contributed. Uh, you know, and you look at the answers; they essentially look pretty comprehensive in that senses, um, and also you know uh, they 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 look correct as well. So what do night sweats indicate? You know, night sweats are a common symptom that can be caused by a variety of underlying medical conditions. Uh, they could be because of uh, uh, I mean, you know, uh, the persistent night sweats can be a sign of serious underlying medical condition like infection, fever, anxiety, uh, menopause, hypothyroidism, uh, cancer, and so on. Okay. So it comes up with really comprehensive, correct, um, and detailed, detailed answers. Okay, so in summary, in this video, I talked about three things, uh, multi-med QA benchmark, uh, FlanPalm model, and MedPalm model, right? We observe that MultiMed QA benchmark is a benchmark with seven medical QA data sets, which have been built from medical exam questions, medical research, and also consumer medical questions. Uh, I talked about a flat palm model, which is essentially an instruction tuned uh, variant of uh, palm 540 billion model. In this video, I didn't talk about how flat palm model is really created. That's in another video. But here I did talk about uh, how flat palm model essentially establishes state of the art results across this uh, MultiMed QA benchmark. Last day, I talked about MedPalm model, which is essentially instruction prompt tuned from on top of FlanPalm model. And we observed that MedPalm model is much closer to a clinician across several attributes of correct reasoning, um, you know, um, uh, being less biased, coming up with correct answers, not coming up with any harmful answers, and so on, right, uh, as compared to the FlanPalm model. So MedPalm is actually better than FlanPalm, right? Uh, here is yet another last uh, quick evaluation. So they also uh, checked with lay people, you know, common man, right? Hey, if you take this MedPalm model and you take a flat palm model, you know, uh, which one addresses the intent of your question better? And they observed that MedPalm model addresses the the, the clinician, uh, the, the, the patient's question much better compared to flat, uh, flat palm model. Similarly, they also asked how helpful is the answer? And they found, uh, you know, that the MedPalm model answers were much helpful compared to flat palm model answers. So that's about Matt Palm. Hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my home.